Good afternoon, everyone. This is Megan from GoGPS, and today we're going to be covering how to edit your vehicle's descriptions and information regarding your vehicle. Okay, so we're going to start clicking the vehicle tab on the left hand side. Okay, and when you purchase GPS units from GoGPS, they will be entered in as serial numbers unless otherwise specified in a list format given to us for us to update. Okay, but all you would do is click on the name of the device that's been installed inside of a vehicle and then change the description name. So we're going to put this one as test, okay? When the vehicle um, has the GPS unit installed into it, it will automatically pull the VIN number, the odometer, and the current engine hours. As long as the vehicle can provide that information, it will be there. You do have the option to put in the license plate number, any additional comments for this vehicle, and then select the state or province that the vehicle resides in. Also in this section, you can apply a specific driver feedback, which will do audible noises in the cab of the vehicle to kind of help um, train your drivers and kind of curb bad driving habits, um, as well as apply the vehicle to a group and then see the service plan. So to take a look at the driver feedback, you would select that tab here. And you do have the option to turn any of these on. Okay, so based off of what kind of mode that the device is on, whether it be base or pro, um, there is a difference between the two of them. Pro mode, you have the ability to pull engine data. So that's things like harsh acceleration, cornering, uh, braking, as well as seat belts. Now, if you do not have pro or pro plus mode, if you have hours of service or less, you're going to be able to cover everything else that you're, you're seeing here that's listed. The only additional item in here would be the driver identification reminder. You are required an add-on for that feature, uh, which is an IOX NFC reader with a fob. And what that does is it allows the device to beep at the driver to remind them to fob into the system and assign themselves to the vehicle. Okay. But ones that we can turn on right now are beeping with uh, engine RPMs. So if somebody has a bit of a, a heavy foot, you can kind of help curb that by lowering it or maybe upping it a, a bit more. Okay. Uh, we can take a look at idling for long periods of time, depending on what kind of uh, company you're running. If they're, you know, doing construction or if they're lawn care, um, you might want to have a different um, duration of idling than you would, say, somebody that's maybe just an installer. Again, it's up to you and it's customizable by vehicle, or you can have it the same for every vehicle in your fleet. It's completely the company's choice. We also have speed warnings. And this here, the way that it's set up is it doesn't matter the posted road speed. All that matters is this is the top that you would like for your driver to drive before you kind of want them to slow down a little bit. Um, this is not a governor. This will not, you know, not, not allow your drivers to speed more than this. It will just consistently beep at the vehicle until they lower their speed. Uh, a suggestion from us is to always do uh, a difference of maybe two to three kilometers in between beeps. So for an example, start beeping at 100 kilometers, we're gonna maybe say stop beeping at 97, okay? And again, that's, that's customizable for, for the vehicles as well, okay? Another one in here we have is beep on dangerous driving. So based off of the type of vehicle that you have, whether it's a passenger car, a truck, cube van, or a heavy duty, you can select an individual type and it's based off of G-forces being read inside of that vehicle. Another option is beep when seatbelt is not in use. Um, a lot of, of our clients will allow the drivers to go 10 kilometers or less without a seatbelt before the uh, audibles will alert. Um, it, would be six it would be six miles for the Americans out there. Um, but you can, again, adjust that if you want it to be less or more. And if the vehicle has the ability to provide a passenger seatbelt, then you can choose that option too. Okay. And last but not least, we do have the beep when in reverse. So some vehicles out there will have a beeper on the exterior of the vehicle to allow people outside to know that the vehicle is in reverse and that the vehicle will be backing up. Now this just gives you the option to have an alert inside of the vehicle so that the driver can also hear it as well. Okay. So that covers the driver feedback tab in here. Um, now we're going to take a look at the groups. If you do not have groups set up in, inside your software, that's not a problem if it's not needed. If you do, you have the ability to apply one or more groups to the vehicle and then based off of which what users are allowed to see um, will be if they're showing up in the list of vehicles or not okay so for just an example we're going to choose go gps canada 
we're going to apply this vehicle to this group. Okay. The next tab we have is a service plan. And what this does right now, um, this device is not uh, plugged in, so it will not tell us what kind of mode the vehicle is in, which is fine, but it just gives you an example as to what the vehicle is capable of or what information the device can pull that, that's inside of a vehicle. So if the vehicle was on base mode, it would have information in regards to Go Talk, NFC, and again, those are add-ins, but it's just able to pull that kind of information. Then the next level is hours of service, then Pro mode, which again, that pulls the engine data and accelerometer, and then Pro Plus is active tracking, so it shows a lot of information. Okay. So the last thing that we're going to kind of touch on today is if a vehicle gets turned in or in an accident, but the GPS unit is still good and you want to put it into a different vehicle, there's a way to do that. So in here, we would copy the serial number that's inside of the vehicle. Put it in the description and you can make notes in here um, in regards to, you know, say the vehicle got turned in on today's date. Okay. Just so when you come back, you can take a look and you can remember why the vehicle was specifically named something else and, and why you're naming it something new. Okay. So I would make those uh, notes inside the comment section. Click save. Then I would go back into that vehicle and click the more details button and choose to unplug. Now, the reason why we're saying to do this is because this will now keep the information that was recorded for that vehicle assigned to that vehicle's description. So in a year from now, if I wanna come back and take a look at all the driving that this vehicle has completed within a certain time range, I'm able to do so by searching up um, the vehicle's description name, okay? So I'm going to click unplug and now it will no longer show inside my list of vehicles here, okay? Which is totally okay, that's, that's normal. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna add that serial number back into the software so that we can now apply that GPS unit to a different vehicle. So I'm going to click add at the top of the screen, add vehicle, enter in that serial number that I copied. I can then go ahead and change the description right now. Um, so we're just gonna put test two. Click OK. You have the option to put in the license plate, comments, again, state and province, any kind of driver feedback, apply it to groups, and then choose save. And then there's my vehicle. Okay. Um, that pretty much wraps up the vehicle tab. If you do have any further questions, please contact our training section or call our service department and anybody here will be able to assist you with this. I hope the session was very informative and I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you.